25th November, 1879, Hyderabad Sin saw the birth of a spiritual soul, T.L. Vaswani. At a tender age of nine, Hanbardas Liraram Vaswani had his first mystical vision, after which the natural inclination was to follow the spiritual path. But that wasn't meant to be, because his mother, worried about her son's future, wanted him to follow academics, which he did brilliantly and his career culminated into getting MA degree, post which he joined many prestigious colleges as a professor. Sadhu Vaswani, it is difficult to describe a man of his type, but I can say that sometimes as I drew close to him, I felt that to touch the hem of his garment was to commune with God. The light of God shone in his eyes. The smile of God was on his face. A wonder of the infinite was in his faraway gaze, and a fragrance as of the spring breeze was in the wondrous words that he spoke. Sadhu Vaswani was born in a family. They were not very rich. They were not even middle class. They belonged to a lower middle class group. Sadhu Vaswani was a man of tremendous spiritual magnetism. Right from his childhood, I think. He had made up his mind to dedicate his life at the lotus feet of the Lord. But because his mother would not permit just to keep his mother happy, he picked up jobs. He became a professor, then he became a principal of a number of colleges. Then he was the principal of the Patiala College. His mother passed away. And the very first thing that he did after consigning her body to the flames, the very first thing that he did send in his resignation. His friends, his relatives told him, what are you doing? You have such a beautiful, such a wonderful job. You can even rise to become the minister of education. Why do you want to resign? He said, life is not given for jobs. What then is the purpose of life? And his answer was, the purpose of life is to dedicate it at the lotus feet of the Lord in the service of the poor and broken ones. And this is what he did all his life. In 1910, at a young age of 30, he was invited to Berlin as one of India's representatives to Welt Congress of Religions. His lectures all over Europe won him many accolades and aroused deep interest in Indian thought all over the world. He always insisted. We used to celebrate so many days. He used to say your celebration is not complete until you go to the poor. The poor are the pictures of God. If you want to worship God, go and serve the poor. That is the right way to worship God. His emphasis was also on spending time in silence every day. Whenever we went up to him with a question, he said, you are the answer to your question, you will get when you sink deeper within yourself. So he taught us to go within ourselves. Even as a child, he, his heart moved out to the poor and the broken ones. His friends would come to him and say to him, why don't you come and play games with us? He said, come to me and I will teach you a new game. And he said, the pocket money that you get, save one day's pocket money in a week and we shall purchase out of it wheat flour and give to our mother 
she will pair prepare chapatis we will take those chapatis to the quarters where the poor sit and there we shall make them sing the holy name of god and we shall distribute those chapatis to them sadhu vasvani believed that woman is a symbol of shakti shakti is not force shakti is the energy that integrates he believed and that it is woman's integrating shakti that will build a new civilization for the new age he said to us again and again that man has had his chance man has bungled man has blundered man has built up a civilization of wars and violence of hatred and strife the civilization is already breaking beneath the burden of its own weight a new civilization is to be built and the builder of this new civilization will be the woman and the civilization which a woman builds will be a civilization of harmony and peace for which the wounded the tortured soul of humanity has cried piteously age after age therefore he worked with women post the struggle sadhu vaswani actively withdrew from politics and turned his attention to education he firmly believed that character building will ensure nation's building with this vision in mind he created mira movement in education in 1933 headquartered now in pune the movement's aim is in enriching the students with vital truths about modern life and at the same time instilling them with values and culture of india he started a satsang he called it the sakhi satsang it was open only to women then after some time men came to him in a deputation and requested him Uh, why do you deny us uh, we want to hear the word of god from your lips and he permitted them to come but he found that women were not given that respect which they deserved he believed that women had in energies which only if we could draw out we could build a new world He started by opening a sakhi stores. He said you run the stores on your own. Don't take the head of men. And it was a successful stores. He opened a press. He called it the Pilgrim Press. And he said let women run the press. So in various ways he drew the inherent power that lay within the heart of women 1920 india a hotbed for struggle for independence sadhu vaswani could not but join the movement working closely with mahatma gandhi and the satyagraha movement he not only fought in action but with words inspiring the youth to join the struggle for him the struggle for independence was not only for that but also to free the oppressed from shackles of poverty for spiritual upliftment and to restore the human dignity he was in touch with some of the leaders of india because after he gave up his job as principal it was about the time when mahatma gandhi had started his freedom uh, movement but he was a close associate of mahatma gandhi and the freedom struggle uh, later on he separated because uh, as early as 1921 there was a press conference at which he was asked do you think india is going to get freedom he said sure as the sun rises in the east india is going to be free but my one anxiety is that when india gets freedom India should be ready to have it. India should not be wanting. So he started a number of ashrams where he trained young people 
and when India got freedom, they could take charge of the administration and they could be in charge of different spheres of human activity. In the year 1939, Sadhu Vaswani wanted to build a house in Karachi. He wanted to spend some little time in Hyderabad and then he wanted a sort of a refuge where he could come and spend in silence. So that house was being uh, supervised over by me. When the house was ready, Sadhu Vaswani shifted to that house. We used to uh, live on the ground floor. There was a room on the first floor which was occupied by Sadhu Vaswani. There we used to have satsang every morning and every Saturday evening we had a Gita class in English. The satsang used to be held in Sindhi because we lived in that quarter in which people could understand Sindhi very easily. And during that time, I remember, Sadhu Vaswani started a Satyagraha campaign over a socio-economic question. He did Satyagraha. There was a big hall, Kalikdana Hall, all the people had met there. And I still remember the words that he spoke. It was perhaps the shortest speech that he ever gave in his life. He said, the best speech is action. That's all. And he, he led the march, Satyagra. We came out of the hall. The police were there ready to arrest us. I was uh, short-sized. They did not want to arrest me. There were 11 leaders. All of them were put in a bus. There was one policeman who was standing. His legs were apart. I just got through his legs and then and sat in the bus. That is how I was. Because I said, who's going to take care of Sadhu Vaswani? Sadhu Vaswani had gout. His, his knee had become that size. So I said somebody should be there to take care of him. So that's how I got into jail. The magistrate delivered his judgment. 14 years imprisonment in A class. So we were sent there. Uh, the difficulty was that Sadhu Aswani could not walk. Could not. So he, uh, how could he attend to uh, the morning routine and all that? I had a separate room uh, next to Sadhu Aswani's, so we converted that into a uh, sort of a WC. <laughs> and we both occupied the other room. Sadhu Aswani could not sleep until his legs were pressed. But at six o'clock, it was the rule of the jail, all rooms were locked. So they came and locked our room. I explained to the doctor there that Sadhu Aswan will not be able to sleep at all until his legs were pressed. So he said, don't worry, I shall keep uh, your two rooms open. You go and put Sadhu Aswan to sleep and then quietly come to your room. The next day the superintendent came on a round during the daytime. And he said, you are all in jail. Tell me, have you any difficulty? I said, this is our difficulty. They lock us up at 6 o'clock. And Sadhu Asmani cannot sleep until he... He said, these people are fools. He called the, all the official, officials and told them, do you know these people, if you force them out, they will still come and occupy the jail until you fulfill their conditions. Why do you lock them up at night? So the locks were taken away. And, and the atmosphere in the town became uh, very difficult. The people said that we are going to have a no confidence in the government motion in the assembly. They have uh, imprisoned Sadhu Aswani. What do they mean? Then the ministers came and said, we will do as you tell us to do, but please come out of jail. 
Sadhu Aswani told them, I will not come out of jail until you pass the ordinance. So four days we were in jail. Then the ordinance was passed and then we came out of jail. He came to Bombay and for over three months he was in Bombay. Then he had to decide where should he stay. A devotee of his had already uh, rented a building and kept for him here in Pune. Sadhu Vaswani said, I would wish either to live in Pune or in Bangalore because these are the two places where I will get the quiet that I need. Silence was his food and drink. Now a building was already rented for him in Pune and it was easy for him to come from Bombay to Pune. So he made Pune the headquarters of his work. When he came to Pune, he stayed at what was known as the Pande Cottage. But that was a small house and it did not give him freedom uh, of work to have satsang and to have other uh, departments of activity. When we got this building, people said that it is haunted. Don't take it. Sadhu Vaswani said, we should go to a haunted house because the name of God will liberate, set free the entity that has been imprisoned in this house. As Sadhu Vaswani received an invitation from Ceylon, Lanka, they were, it was 1939 when Hitler had pounced upon Poland. They call it the Rape of Poland. And uh, so they organized a Pan-Asian Conference for Peace at Colombo and they requested Sadhu Aswani to come and preside over the conference. Uh, he wanted somebody to go with him. I joined him. And from that day onwards, I have been with him. Much of the time, I think his health was not as it should have been. Uh, maybe it's because of the years. We came here in 1949. Uh, that means he was 70 years old then. We used to have satsangs, which he used to attend regularly. And there was that power in his words. He used to give his messages, he used to write, we had his books published. But his emphasis was more on singing the holy name of God. In the words of then President Dr. Rajendra Prasad, Sadhu Vaswani's life was a saga of unassuming service, spiritual illumination and a source of inspiration to us all. He toiled day after day, wanting nothing for himself but seeking opportunities to be of service to the poor, lonely and the lost. He knew that the poor are starved not only for bread but for love. In his teaching he emphasized this thought towards the close of his life. Otherwise he was a man of Shakti. The ashramas that he opened he called them Shakti Ashram, Para Shakti Ashram. But uh, during the last period of his life he, his emphasis was on uh, singing the holy name of God. He used to have kirtans in the satsang. In almost every sermon that he gave, he said you must not forget the name divine. Repeat the name and your inner instrument will be cleansed. And the purpose for which you have received this human birth will be fulfilled in some measure. So his emphasis was only on two things. Firstly, clasp God to your hearts. And secondly, keep your hands busy in helping some people. He also said again and again that the time is coming. Many will not agree with this, but he spoke with the foresight of a seer. When he said, the day is coming when meat eating will be condemned as murder. Therefore, to celebrate his birthday, the 25th of November, in the right way, we have been observing it year after year as a meatless day and as an animal rights day. We get pledges from all over the world. 
from countries as far as Brazil, assuring us that they will observe 25th of November as a meatless day. The 25th of November is a day to remember. It is a meatless day. Wouldn't you be interested in knowing a little more about the mission, how it grew, the people associated with it? So tune in next week, same time, and watch an enlightening episode of Trailblazers and listen to Dada Vaswani.